Welcome! In this video we're going to be going over the installation of RetroPie and the benefits of installing RetroPie over just installing Raspbian, Recalbox, or you know other operating systems through the Noobs installer. Um, with RetroPie you're getting more emulators and more support and on top of it all you can install Raspbian and Kodi inside of RetroPie after you've already installed RetroPie on the SD card. That way there's one partition with RetroPie on it, so your entire SD card is for that operating system. As to where, if you used Noobs and you installed, like, let's say, three operating systems, such as, you know, let's say you installed Recalbox and Raspbian, now it would have two partitions and you'd have less space for your games. So if you install RetroPie and in the menus you can manually install uh, an application like Raspbian, it will share the same partition as RetroPie, that way you're not limiting your space for your games. So going on with RetroPie, you have tons of emulator support and it's pretty easy installation. So you're going to first go to retropie.org.uk. Click on the Downloads section from there. Then you can download it for the Raspberry Pi 0, 1, 2, or 3. This will work on any of those builds, and then you proceed to download. Once you download your image, you're going to extract it until you have a .image file. Then you're going to go to Google, search for the Win32 Disk Imager. This is a SourceForge project to where you can flash your micro SD card with the RetroPie image for the operating system. So you would download and install this. Once you install that, you're going to have your disk imager. Now, then you're going to plug in your micro SD card to your PC. Now, whatever partitions you have previously on your micro SD card will not matter as this entire software will format the SD card, make it completely blank, and just have RetroPie on it. So from the disk imager, you're going to browse for your image. Mine's right here. Then you're going to open it. Then you're going to proceed to write the image, and you want to hit yes to continue as you're going to overwrite the entire device with RetroPie. So hit yes. Now this process can take a little while depending on the speed of your SD card. This current SD card that I am using is a Samsung Evo Plus 32 gigabytes, so it's taking about two minutes. Now after this process is done, you can eject your SD card, put it into the Raspberry Pi, and power it on. Upon powering on the RetroPie, you're going to be greeted with a bunch of text as well as images. Now this process is the RetroPie installer that is going to be resizing the partition, taking up all the available space for RetroPie on your SD card. Once it's installed, you're going to be greeted with the welcome screen. Now, from here, you're going to want to configure your keyboard over your gamepad. So you're going to press a key and hold it to configure. Uh, the main things here are you're going to want to configure your up and down, your start and select, and your A and B. You want to remember those. The rest of these on your keyboard will be pretty much useless, so you can press any random key as I did. Um, like I said, the only thing you're going to want is the arrow keys, the A and B, and the start and select. After that, you're going to be put into the RetroPie screen. Now from here, you're going to want to hit your A key on RetroPie, and then hit your A key again on the Wi-Fi. Now this is going to be able to get you obviously connected to Wi-Fi. You want to connect to your main network at home, or if you don't need to do this, you can always plug in your Ethernet cable directly to your Raspberry Pi, and you can go that route as well. And by the way, when selecting items on the blue screen menu, it's always going to be your start key on your keyboard, not the A key. And after connecting to Wi-Fi, you can just simply arrow over to the exit tab and hit your start key on that. Now from here, we're going to hit our A key on the RetroPie. Scroll up to RetroPie Setup and hit A again. Once this loads, it's going to put you in a blue screen and you're going to go to Configurations forward slash Tools. Then scroll down to Raspbian Tools. And then go to Install Pixel Desktop Environment. And this will give you the Pixel Desktop Launcher inside of RetroPie. And after that finishes, we can go to Manage Packages and then into Optional Packages. We're going to scroll all the way down past the LRs and then we're going to get to Kodi. We're going to then install Kodi from Binary, hit OK, and let that run. 
Now after that finishes, we're going to go back to the RetroPie menu, and we're going to hit our Start key on our keyboard, and then we're going to go to Restart Emulation Station. Now in my video, I did the shutdown of the RetroPie because I was going to swap SD cards back to my main SD card to show you the installed operating systems already. Now once we're booted back up with our RetroPie, you can hit the A key on the ports menu and then hit A on your desktop. Now this will boot you into your Raspbian Pixel Launcher. Now the main purpose of Raspbian for myself is so I can go on the internet, download files, as well as browse my internal micro SD card storage. Also, if you're ever in Raspbian and just want to get to Kodi quickly, you can launch Kodi from inside of Raspbian as well. And to now get back to your RetroPie, you just go to Shutdown. You can always exit to Command Line. That'll bring you right back into RetroPie. Now we can boot into Kodi, but another thing that I should mention is no emulators will show up on your main menu until you put ROMs in the correct corresponding folders. Now once you're inside of Kodi, you can proceed with installing all of your add-ons that you would like to use. And to get out of Kodi, the same exact thing. You would just go up to the power icon and then you would hit exit. Sometimes this process does take a few seconds. You can also reboot and shut down from this menu as well. And one more small little thing is you might want to hit the start button on the main menu and then go down to configure input after you've plugged in a controller and then answer yes to that and then proceed to configure your gamepad as you're not going to want to be playing all your games with a keyboard and mouse. Now, if you have any questions regarding the installation process, please feel free to comment below. I'm going to be making more technical videos in the future, so subscribe for those. I hope this video has helped you, and as always, have a good day, guys.